Good morning, friends and family. Isn't it fantastic that even though churches have been closed down for two weeks officially, that we can still reach you, that we can still reach you with the Word of God, as God invites you in this morning to the celebration of His Son, the celebrating where we celebrate the victory of Jesus Christ. You see, Christ died for our sins on the cross. He bought us out of condemnation. He redeemed us. He redeemed us by His blood. He was victorious over death. He's resurrected now as a living Christ. And this we should celebrate every single day. Um, I was wondering, when did church just become about saving our souls? When did church become so focused on just saving our souls and forgetting about delivering God's children into His kingdom? This morning I want to share with you two parts of the Bible. One of the New Testament, Matthew 22, where Jesus is talking and he's, he's using um, a likeness. He says, the kingdom is like, from I suppose verse 1 to 14. And then we'll go through to one of the most favorite psalms of all times, Psalm 23. So Matthew 22, verse 1 to 14. If you don't mind, I'm going to take my time today. Um, Jesus spoke to them again in parables saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field and another to his business. The rest seized the servants, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed these murderous murderers and burnt the city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those are invited that did, did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wed wedding clothes. He asked him, How did you get in here without wedding clothes, my friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, Tie him up and tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be a weeping and a gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. So my big question this morning is, are you invited? Have you been invited to this banquet of the king, the king's son? You see, our inv invitation is every day of every week, but mostly Sundays. The invitation to celebrate the life of Jesus Christ. And when you are invited is, how do you respond? In this, this parable, we read, three different responses. We read in verse 3 that he sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused. You see, a majority of the population just ignore this great invitation. They simply refuse to come to this feast. And Hebrews 2 says, how shall we escape if we ignore so great salvation. This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard Him. You see, this invitation is to everyone. It's like if you were stranded in the Atlantic, nothing around you, no lifeboat around you, and all of a sudden, this great big ship 
comes before you. And they offer you a saving line. They throw out a line to save you. And you say to them, no thanks. I'll wait for the next boat. My friends, there is no other boat. This is the boat. This is the boat you need to catch in your life. When this boat sails, and it will sail, it will eventually sail. The invitation will end one day. When it sails, it is over. There is no other boat. Now we read in verse 4, Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. You see, God supplies in this banquet out of His shed, out of His stores. It is His supply that He supplies for every single one of us. He says He has already done it out of His supply. He has set the table for us, a table flowing, full of everything you can imagine. And it will just cost you, all it will cost you is to arrive. But they paid no attention and went off. One went to the field and other to his business. How often do we hear that I've been too busy to attend? I have been too busy to start with scripture in the morning. I have been too busy to pray. I have been busy with this and that. I have been planting and I have been reaping. I have been working. Jesus has done everything and now all that you need to do is rock up. But we are too busy for the creator of heaven and earth. You know, so often I walk into one of our shopping centers and I see some people there. And they'd say, Mark, I'm sorry I didn't make it to church. I don't care what your excuse is. That's your excuse. Same as these people were. Sorry, I couldn't make it. I was busy. You know, in Luke 17, we read this. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the day of Lot. People were eating and drinking and buying and selling and planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from the heavens and destroyed them all. What are you so busy with? A pastor friend of mine said, he wonders what would happen if God took away what you are busy with. He wonders. And that's something to ponder on. And then verse 6 Others resisted the invitation with violence, even resorting to murder. Now I guarantee you, if you go out into the streets and proclaim Jesus Christ on the corners of the streets, if you send out this invitation that is inviting every single person, you will get insulted. I guarantee you. And I wonder if you do have the guts to go out there and proclaim Jesus to this world. You see, you are invited to a celebration in this life. For many are invited, but few are chosen. How do you know if you are chosen this morning? How do you know if, if Jesus Christ has chosen you for this banquet? You see, whether you are chosen depends on your response this morning. If your response is yes, and if your response is arriving, then you are chosen. For many are invited, but those that arrive are chosen, accepting the man that attended the banquet without entering through Jesus Christ. And that's for another day. John 3, 19 to 20. This is the verdict. Light has come into this world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come 
into the light for fear or that their deeds will be exposed. Jesus isn't here to make a fool of you, to expose all your flaws and your faults. We all have flaws and faults. Jesus is here to rescue you from them and to lead you into the light. The invitation to a celebration in this world is out to you now. I am inviting you now. Like the servants of Jesus, like the servants of the King that were inviting people in honor of the King's Son, so how do you respond this morning? What is your response? But know this, that one day this opportunity will pass. And why is this so important to bring this message to you? You see, God has done everything to qualify you for the feast. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, who paid your entry into this feast. God wants you at the feast this morning. The feast is a place of joy, of celebration. A feast is a place where we get to say hello to the Maker. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I was asking someone the other day, why are the stock farmers moving away from sheep, farming sheep in the Northern Cape? And we went this way and that way in the argument about jackal and people and stock theft, and etc. And I was wondering if it is the, about the abundance of stock thieves and jackal, or was it about the absence of shepherds? That's something to ponder upon. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now I want to be concentrating on verse 5 till the end. The Lord God prepares for you a table in the midst of your enemies. So where is this table? Is this table to be set for you in heaven one day when you get to heaven that you get this abundance table set for you? Or is this table set for you in this world, in this space, now, this Sunday? And if it is set for you in heaven, why are your enemies in heaven? Because it is set for you Prepare a table before, in, before me in the presence of my enemies. You see, my friends, this table set for you is set in this life for you, in this world for you. The story of God, the whole story of God is to benefit you, but to glorify Him. To benefit, to bring worldly benefit to you in this world. You get the good and God gets the glory. So this table is set in this world. It is set in this time for you. So your enemies are sitting around you in this world. And your enemies are not just people that oppose you, but situations, feelings that oppose you. Sorrow could be an enemy. Fear could be your enemy. Disease could be your enemy. Poverty could be your enemy. This morning, sitting around you, all of them, your ailments, anything that attacks you is your enemy. And in the midst of all these struggles, at least once a week, God says, come sit at my table. 
Come sit in my presence. Come sit in the table that I provide for you. God wants to meet you here and now. And He wants to supply for you in this world, not just in heaven. Think about it for a moment. Just, just ponder on this for a moment. You sitting down across the table from God. You see, you don't need to come to this table. You can go on your own. You can be that shepherdless sheep today. But I guarantee you that you will crash and burn. I guarantee you that one day you will turn to the Lord. Who of you this morning need to be restored? This is the invitation for you today. You see, we run around in this world looking for provision instead of coming to the table of the Lord. Who of you need restoration? Who of you need guidance this morning? The staff of the Lord is for guidance. The Lord is ready to guide you in this world, to guide and comfort you in this world. But we see that the shepherd has a staff too. That is to guide you. And he has a rod. And the rod is there not to discipline you, but to fend off the attackers, to bear off the lion and the bear. God sits down with you at this table for two this morning. Out of his provision, he has set a table and he can't wait to meet up with you so he can talk to you. Table for two. This is His table. He had it built. This is His provision. He pays the bill. Come and sit down this morning. You see what this represents in this muddled up world is the Christian life. This is the Christian life represented here. God supplying, supplying peace into your lives. As Christians we are invited to sit down. To say yes. Lord, here I am. We are invited to sit down with the King, but we are too busy. We will hop in to the celebration. We might even take photos. We might even do a selfie with the Lord and then bounce out of here. Hashtag with Jesus. There we were. Instead of sitting down and talking to God. Sometimes at this table, we draw up another chair. And we say to the accuser, come sit at this table. And you think he won't. Do you know he has the audacity to pull up at this table so that he can interrupt. And he will grab some of the produce too off this table. He has that. Remember Jesus in the wilderness. Satan right there. All the time in his ears. Busy. Remember Eve in the Garden of Eden. In paradise, he pitches up. So you think he won't pitch up at this table? And he'll start with small talk. He'll ask you, so how's your wife? Is she still nagging? Still screaming at the children? I don't know how you do it. This is his discussion. You think he's going to rock up like a killer with a sword? Came to steal, kill and destroy. No. He moves in subtly into your table. Now you and Jesus are trying to talk. But somehow you turn your focus towards him. How's your boss? How's your work? I don't know how you're sticking it out, he'd say to you. I don't know why you just don't move on. I don't know why you just don't pack up. He'd say to me, Mark, What's that big scar you have on your forehead? How did you get that? Tell me about that night. Mark, look at the scars on your body. You're not worthy. You see this discussion. You see where it's going. 
He'll start reminding you about your shortcomings. And you will start to doubt. Do you know when you are listening to the enemy? You are listening to the enemy when you start thinking that it will be better at another table. This is the best table for you to be on, no matter what your circumstances. But you think it's about time to move off, to marry another girl, to sell off, to go into a different business. You'll start thinking that you're not good enough. You'll start saying to yourself, I'm not going to make it. You'll start saying when someone asks you, how, how are you? You'd answer with, I don't know. Do you think when you sit across the table with Jesus and he asks you, how are you? And you start with, I don't know. Do you think he doesn't know who you've been speaking to? When you start thinking that I'm surrounded and there's no way out, when you start thinking that everything is against me, then you have pulled up a chair at the table for the evil one and he is about to devour you. He is about to destroy you and so he is a murderer. Who are you listening to this morning? You see, my friends, I am not defined by my scars. I am defined by the scars of the living bread. Of Jesus Christ. That's what defines me. Not my scars. But his scars. Because my scars. Equal shame. And fail. But his scars. Equal victory. And abundance. So why listen to a killer. When you have. At your table. Or at his table. The life source. That in his word says, yeah, it says it. Whoa, the wind blew the page. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That is what Jesus says. So you know, even though it is going bad, even though you are doubting this morning, you will make it. Why write your story this morning on the story of this world? Why write it on the failures of this world when you can write your story on the abundance of the word this morning? Your choice this morning. You see, you are invited. Every single one of you are invited. You have been given a seal that seals you off in this world. You've been given this morning a word that says you will make it. You will make it in this life because the Word says it. Not the world says it. God says it. At the abundance table is where we meet Jesus Christ this morning. Every morning. An invitation for you. But we are too busy. One day the invitation will end. But if you have the guts to say no more, I am going to sit at this table with God until I get Rebuilt, refueled, resurrected with Jesus Christ. Romans 8. Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. You are set free. You are so precious that God sends His Son to buy you free. I am not defined by my scars because my scars equal shame, death and failure. I am defined by the one that who when he broke the bread and he gave me bread, I saw the scars in his hands. He paid for me. I am defined by Jesus Christ. You see, church is about more than just your salvation. It is about bringing heaven to this world. It is about following the Prince of Peace, being healed by His stripes, being bought by His blood. To summarize this morning, I want to use the words of Tim Keller. The ultimate purpose 
of Jesus is not only the individual salvation and pardon for sins, but also the renewal of this world, the end of disease, poverty, injustice, violence, suffering, and death. That is the invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. You have been invited by me as servant to attend the banquet. How will you respond this morning? If you're responding, yes. Welcome, my friends, to the abundance table. This represents the kingdom in this life in this world. Amen. I want to pray this morning. I want to pray all fear out of your life and abundance into your life, all healing into your life. Let us pray together. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Father, thank you for this message this morning. Thank you, Father, that you have prepared this table for us, a table of abundance, a table flowing for us. Father, allow my friends and family to see this invitation as clearly as I see it this morning, that they may pull up a chair this morning with you, Jesus, and say, Morning God, here I am, reporting for this festival. Lord, I pray that you bind up every single fear that is driving situations in this world, fear in your children, that they may see, even though they face this dark valley, that you have promised that we will make it through it. I pray the abundance into every single member and non-member, every believer, that they will see that all supply comes from you, Father. I thank you for your Son, whom you were willing to tear apart for us, so that he would bleed out, so that we can be accepted into this banquet this morning. Thank you for your presence on this little stoop this morning. I thank you that you are constant, a Father that we can stand firm on, word that we can stand firm on this morning. I thank you, Father. I pray for every single person that does not know you yet, that they will have a meeting place with you today, that their loneliness will end, and that you would show them the hope and the future that you have for them. I thank you, Father. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friends and family, thank you very much for tuning in. Please look after yourselves. Please stay safe. Please come to the festival of Jesus Christ. He has done it all for you and for me. Until we see you again, remember we miss you and we love you. Amen.